welcome back to Fort Meigs Historic Site. I'm Dan, the Programs Manager uh, here at Fort Meigs, and with me is John Thompson, our Historic Interpreter. And in this blockhouse, blockhouse number two, this exhibit blockhouse is all set up to look the way that they would have looked like back in 1813. That's right. Uh, now the blockhouses here at Fort Meigs were not used as barracks, so soldiers did not sleep in here. Uh, this were, they were the guard towers uh, of the time. So guard duty would have been performed around the clock here in the blockhouses. Artillery crews here on the ground floor and rifle or musket men working upstairs. The blockhouses themselves uh, were constructed with thick timbered oak, two feet thick in fact, uh, and they were actually strong enough to stop the artillery shells from coming into Fort Meigs. The heavy construction of the buildings was similar to that of the USS Constitution, Old Ironsides, as it earned its nickname during the War of 1812. It went up against the HMS Guerriere, and reports from the British ship in that engagement said that the cannonballs bounced off the sides of the hull as if they were made of iron, and the name Old Ironsides had stuck. And if you look at the ceiling beams here in Blockhouse 2, or indeed the door frames or the window frames, you can get a really good view of those thick, thick, heavy white oak walls that these blockhouses were made from. On the ground floor, a single artillery piece would have been uh, here to defend this place, manned by approximately 12 to 15 soldiers, and it would be able to fire out of the gun ports on either side of the blockhouse. The interior windows were set up to allow as much natural light in as possible. Moonlight during the evening, uh, sunlight during the day to make things as bright as possible. That's also why the white paint was placed on the walls, was to help get as much natural light into the building as possible. The white paint would have helped reflect that and make things a little bit brighter. That way we can have no uh, candles, lanterns, torches, no open flames of any kind in this building because of the amount of stored gunpowder that would have been here to service the artillery pieces. Very, very, um, very, very dangerous uh, to have open flame near any of that. Now this cannon here is actually pointed out towards the Maumee River uh, just outside of Blockhouse 2. And through this porthole window, this weapon could fire on anyone across the river, in the river, or coming up from the river. We also have other portholes in this uh, building, so if we needed to open up two and fire out of two directions, we could do that as well. In the um, very, very dangerous situation that the walls were breached by the enemy, these guns can actually be swung around and actually fired out the door of the blockhouse uh, in order to protect the soldiers in here. If the walls had been breached, there were standing orders here from General Harrison that all the men to, were to retreat to the blockhouses and to defend them to the very last man. In fact, Alexander Bourne, a colonel in the Ohio militia, said that Harrison himself came up to him and said, you will fight until all of your men are killed, and if they are, you will draw your own sword and fight until you are killed. There is an abnormal amount of iron nails driven into the shutters and the door. That's there to kind of act as an armor plating. If the British had gotten inside, they might try to cut into the building with axes, and the additional number of nails would dull up the axe blade, and it would take a little bit longer. It would be uh, more of a struggle to get inside of the building. So the second floor of blockhouses at this time actually was designed to extend out beyond the first floor. So the walls would go up, it would extend out about a foot, and then up a second uh, to the second floor. And in that overhang would be called murder holes, small little trap doors that could be lifted up and the men on the second floor of the blockhouse could fire straight down onto any enemy up against the wall trying to set fire to the building. Now unfortunately the blockhouses here at Fort Meigs were not reconstructed in that manner and to be quite honest we're not really sure why. And for the benefit of the public today we do have a staircase leading up to the second floor. But uh, traditionally, the soldiers would have ascended a ladder and then through a trap door to get to that second floor, where again the rifle or the musket men would be stationed to fire out of special loophole windows. So here we are on the second floor of blockhouse number two, and again this would be for the rifle or the musket men to be stationed, firing out of these special loophole windows. And they're designed very specifically uh, with a larger window here on the interior of the building and a very small window uh, on the outside. 
Now the large window here is designed so that a soldier holding a rifle or a musket uh, can move side to side and up and down and have a very wide arc of fire. But the exterior window is really only large enough just for the muzzle of that gun to get out. It would be extremely difficult for an enemy to shoot into that tiny hole. So the soldier here is relatively safe. And again, the walls are whitewashed to help make things a little bit brighter inside this building, uh, especially in the nighttime. Uh, again, the soldiers will be on guard 24 hours a day, so I'm sure at 2 o'clock in the morning it was going to be extremely dark and probably very cold if it was here in March or, or in April uh, in the early part of the spring as this fort is under construction. Here in Black House 2, we have uh, 14 uh, of these loophole windows upstairs, so there would indeed have been 14 men stationed, one for each window. Now, that soldier is going to have a partner that's going to stand in the center of the room. And the partner's job is simply to load the musket. It's going to increase the firepower up here. If we can get a small machine going where once uh, the shot has been uh, expired, it can be passed to the partner who can hand the rifleman then a new weapon and we can continue firing and increase uh, that firepower from up here on the second floor. So that's all about the history of the blockhouses here at Fort Max and the exhibit blockhouse, blockhouse number two. Hope you enjoyed our little talk this day. Uh, please be sure to tune in to our website at fortmanx.org, our social media pages. We are on Facebook and Twitter, as well, of course, YouTube. Uh, and we will see you again in about a week.